uh, April 1. This is not an April Fool's joke. Uh, I've been working out on the tractor. Okay, so uh, this is going to be as short as I can possibly make it. Um, it's late in the day here. I've uh, been uh, blocked from getting back on Twitter. So I won't be able to be any doing any posting there. It was a tricky way to do it. Uh, and I can't reach out to Twitter to get them to undo the problem on my account. Uh, so probably gone from Twitter uh, by deliberate act or, you know, happenstance of software. Who knows? Anyway, this is a going to be a short video about horseshoe bats. Horseshoe bats were the bats that uh, were being studied at both of the bio labs in Wuhan. The reason that they were being studied there is because the Chinese wanted to answer a question. Uh, the bio lab workers wanted to answer a question. These bats that they were studying, these horseshoe bats, which have six subspecies, uh, so it's, it's quite diverse. There is one extinct branch. Um, uh, these uh, horseshoe bats uh, are very interesting because like humans, it was, it was thought they were like humans and that they did not make vitamin C. And thus the question, how could they possibly exist with the huge amount of virus that they carry in them continuously if they didn't have any natural immunity against the uh, viri that were infecting them? And so this has been um, something that has puzzled the Chinese for a long time. And I have included a link down below to an article from 2011, a, a published paper that describes an interesting uh, uh, understanding that arose from uh, the Chinese research into horseshoe bats. And um, uh, the understanding is that it is not true that horseshoe bats don't make vitamin C, okay? There are bats that do make vitamin C, but they don't do it as we recognize. And that's why vitamin C is so critical to this current virus, all right? To the current situation and crises, and why it is the key to where we need to go and what we need to understand. So here's the, here's the, it's in the article, you can go read it. It doesn't take you very long to get down into just past the, um, the abstract and get into the guts of it. And you'll see them make a very bold uh, statement. These are Chinese scientists paid by the Chinese government within the structure that was the housing organizational structure for the CDC of China uh, bio lab number four, which was in Wuhan, uh, which was studying horseshoe bats. The other bio lab was studying horseshoe bats. Okay, so the conclusion is from 2011 that horseshoe bats do make vitamin C, but that we basically don't recognize it as such. That whereas dogs and cats and other animals on this planet make vitamin C and have it uh, measurable within their system as a function of how healthy they are, bats do not. This makes sense because bats live in an environment that's mostly deprived of light. And so light to them is very precious. So we could look, ask evolutionists if indeed this might be the case, that um, evolutionary biologists, right? Like um, one of the Weinstein brothers, um, Eric Weinstein or, or Weinstein, anyway, uh, one of the guys there is an evolutionary biologist. And I, I think that evolutionary biologists would support the conclusion that light is a precious resource to a bat. And so unlike a dog who can get ill or get a, a virus attacking them, and go lie in the sun in order to generate more vitamin C at the base of the follicular um, uh, mass of the hairs, which is where they make their vitamin C, dogs and cats. Uh, bats are not able to do this. Light is a very precious resource. So bats do not make vitamin C as we understand it. They don't have the vitamin C floating protein within their body in, a, in an extractable, measurable form. What they have is parent immunity on demand. If you'll read this article that's linked below, you'll see that these Chinese scientists came to the conclusion that the horseshoe bats had a pseudogenetic structure, okay, pseudogenes, that produced a uh, pseudo, um, 
uh, G L uh, L G U L O, which is the their way of saying the protein structure that catalyzes or creates the vitamin C molecule. So these bats make vitamin C, but they make it on demand. And this is what was the amazing discovery out of the bio lab in Wuhan and why they were able to create such a fierce virus. Okay, because uh, bats uh, don't store vitamin C. They don't make it via light. They make it through this de novo process, this, this uh, final creation act, this uh, chemical catalase process that creates it on demand from a signaling molecule that is not discussed in the article and is deliberately uh, not discussed, deliberately avoided, but its, its absence is glaring. It is, it is hugely pointed to by the fact that they don't discuss the signaling molecules that, are, that, are the, that result in the pseudo um, uh, genome being triggered to cause these proteins to create vitamin C on demand on attack. And so the strategy of the bat is to survive with a certain viral load. And beyond that, where that viral load would threaten the bat itself, at that point, there is a signaling molecule within the bat that the Chinese know about that we do not, that causes vitamin C to be created in its, in its point of need, at its point of use. And so this article and a number of others that were paid, that were studies of these horseshoe bats are still available online. Uh, I put the link in this uh, description and you can uh, go and uh, download it. Uh, this is why vitamin C works, but it's also why vitamin C is necessary to be at a certain level and continuously maintained because we now have to adopt a supplement strategy that is similar to what the horseshoe bat does with its creation of paraimmunity on demand when the viral load starts to threaten to get out of, out of hand. As long as you have that, that vitamin C at a containment level, the, the, you're using the bat's strategy against the virus that they extracted from that bat, bat and that they are attacking you with. Okay, so you can kill the, the virus load because unlike the bats, we can take more vitamin C than is necessary to maintain and contain. We can take enough vitamin C to slam the viral load out of us. And that was the strategy that the Chinese Communist Party started using or, or adopted from, let me phrase that, they adopted from uh, Chinese doctors on the scene in Wuhan and Guangzhou. Okay, the Chinese Communist Party adopted a high vitamin C regimen. They were already um, allocating L-ascorbate, not, not ascorbic acid, but L-ascorbate to uh, military units only out of three L-ascorbate factories. This evidence has disappeared off the internet. It existed primarily on the deep web that I was aware of, and it, and it uh, was removed, our connection to, was removed as of March 1 at 11 a.m. Uh, Pacific Coast time. So I don't have access to it and other people don't have it. However, the article below is one of a number of articles uh, that are obtainable in world repositories about Chinese work with the horseshoe bats specifically focusing on vitamin C. So uh, basically, this is a um, uh, a slap in the face, a bitch slap, to anybody that thinks I'm merely a crazy fucker, okay? I am indeed a crazy fucker, but that does not make me wrong. I am quite correct about this, and unless people understand that it is a bioweapon and vitamin C is the primary key for this at a specific level, people will die unnecessarily. Okay, why does, the, why does chaga work as an augmenting agent for vitamin C, like chuchuasi from South America, okay, which is also a tree bark extracted from, from a tree that has many properties that are similar to birch trees. All right, so Dr. Paul Cottrell, in the early days here, um, worked with people and presented a white paper in which they identified via computer study specific molecules that were likely to be effective against um, COVID-19 coronavirus whatever the fuck they're calling it now. All right, so this, uh, this uh, CCP virus was, had identified 
30 compounds, or, 20, or at least 22 that I'm aware of. Uh, the 22 were located in plants. There was one for birch trees. Chaga mushrooms extract this stuff from birch trees in a fashion and a method and a concentration that is more amenable, more harmonious with the human body, in my opinion, than the birch extract itself, especially over a long term. And that's what we need to understand, that we will, in order to, to survive this bioweapon attack, even the mainstream media is now starting to get online with this. In order to survive this bioweapon attack, we need to adopt this strategy long term until we can get rid of the uh, bioweapon from our environment, which will not be done, in my opinion, by regular disinfectant, except in small areas. This was why I wanted a boat, like the uh, USS Roosevelt, to undertake a specific uh, protocol that involved uh, hardening up the, the sailors uh, with a specific regimen of vitamins and chaga, or ch chuchuasi, for those who can't take the chaga. And because uh, there are some people who the mushroom is just not going to be compatible with because it makes their medicines work harder, etc., etc. Uh, so uh, that's why I wanted a boat, because it was a contained uh, area in which we could harden the people involved as an experiment with safe vitamin C levels, safe chaga, etc. And we could also apply specific kinds of decontamination that I think I understand as to why uh, other kinds of decontamination are not working with this. And that's a subject for another short video. So uh, my, my thing here at the moment, the reason for creating this video, is that I would like people that see this to download it, re-upload it to your own channel, uh, share it any place you can, put it on Twitter if you can, I'm effectively banned there, uh, put it out to all the social media because our military needs to understand what is in this article below which will have the academic uh, backing to make it sound like it's not coming from some strange internet nut job. Okay, whether or not he's crazy is immaterial if he's right and I believe I am correct. So shut up now. The article link is, is in the description. Please pass this around. Get somebody's attention. It's very difficult because, because, like everybody else, they don't trust media, and they sure as fuck don't trust internet nut jobs. But we can get through this, okay? Now that we know what the Chinese are hiding, why they're hiding it, there's only two elements of, that they're hiding that we don't know, which are the two different kinds of signaling molecules that turn this virus on and off. Uh, but it does mean that the, the Chinese Communist Party, the CCP, uh, so I shouldn't call it a Chinese virus, it's, a, you know, it's the CCP virus, can be defeated. And then we can reconcile globally with the CCP and decide what they owe to whom. Anyway, so with respect, guys, uh, I won't be on Twitter. My only social media contact will probably be through YouTube. And, uh, you know, don't waste my time, but if you've got something pertinent, you can send me email. It's easy to find that.